Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be viewing Ghosts, the Button House Archive, which is the companion book to the BBC show Ghosts. And this is created by the creators of Ghosts, so the main six creators. And yeah, I just thought it'd be nice to do a little review of it. If you're a fan of Ghosts and were interested in getting it, then yeah, see whether I would recommend. The retail price of this book is £20. I think I got it for around 16. They were doing a sale, like, uh, like a promotion when I bought it. And that was, I pre-ordered it and that was the price that I got, which is pretty good. And £20 is quite a lot for a book, but I definitely think it's worth it. The quality is really good. One of the things I was perhaps a little bit concerned about is if you haven't seen the whole of the show yet, because it has recently finished, uh, we've got one Christmas episode left, whether or not it would be spoilery. And generally, I don't think so. I think you've definitely got to have seen up to series, like you've got to have seen series four, because there is, like if you pay attention to what's in the book, then there will be a spoiler about a certain ghost. Um, but I think series five, there's not really that many spoilers. I mean, there's not really, there's not spoilers at all. There are a couple of clues as to a certain ghost's death, but um, not really anything drastic. I imagine most people who are fans of ghosts in the UK have either already bought the book or have like requested it for Christmas or something like that. But for international fans, I'm not sure when it's available in your country. But yeah, let's get into the review. As you can see, I have <laughs> tagged all the bits that I thought were kind of fun to talk about. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So when you first open the book and it's on the back page of the book as well, you are presented with this really, really cool timeline of the ghosts and when they were alive, when they moved on. Um, and I like that we've got Annie included in this. Um, we've got the plague victims as well. And I thought this was really a really interesting way of visualizing when the ghosts were alive and when they were ghosts and when they moved on. Like we've got Mary's little gap at the end here as to when she moved on. That again was what I was saying is a bit of a spoiler. Something that I find quite interesting, quite funny is that Robin and Kitty are the same age or pretty much the same age. Kitty is 22 and Robin is 23, which I think that's quite funny considering, you know, they look drastically different ages. One thing that did surprise me was that Humphrey was alive before Mary was. Like looking at it now, yeah, it does make sense, but that took me by surprise. I didn't clock that because I, it's probably because Humphrey looks more new than uh, Mary does. Um, and also, I don't know what it means. I'm, I'm guessing it might be the dark ages, but there is like a gap in Robin's timeline here, which I don't know why i don't i don't get that but it might be just because it's the dark ages or there might be something in the christmas episode where we find out what that what that means i also like there are little key events um along the timeline at the bottom which gives us gives us a reference as to when they were alive and what they experienced one of my favorite pages is the page where we have allison's ghost rules where she has been documenting what happens to the ghosts and um, all the little things that she's learning as they go along. And I love that there is just a general consensus that nobody knows what the ghost rules are in the UK one. Well, they haven't really tried to explain it. There've been like fun reveals, like the fact that the ghosts can wee and they've got Alison writing this in a different colored pen. So it's kind of like as the series has progressed, she is writing it down. And there's a little thing there saying it was pineapple, which is what Alice, uh, what um, Kitty's last meal was, relates to her death episode in series five. One thing that they, that Alison has written down here that they haven't explored um, or haven't um, given us an answer to is that there might be different borders for different ghosts, which I think is quite interesting. We kind of asked that question with the plague ghost and there was a, like, they were just liked staying in the basement. Um, it wasn't that they couldn't leave, but all of the ghosts seem to have the same boundary, which is where like the land is. But if you think about it, the boundary of that land would have been different as different people owned it, sold some land, bought more land. So yeah, I think it's a, they, they could do an interesting exploration where there's a ghost that can go further than everybody else, um, which they haven't really, I know they've played with that a little bit, with the US version, um, having like a ghost that is restricted to just a car. Um, so yeah, they haven't explored that, but I think that's interesting that they've kind of raised that question. Maybe they had a plot line um, 
to do with that. And there is a little thing about why the ghost may become a ghost and why they may potentially move on. I like that they're basically, Alison's asking the same questions we were asking. Um, I think it's really nice. Um, so yeah, none of them have an idea why they're a ghost. There's no unfinished business or sending a message. And they did have the, the point that we had, which was maybe they all suffered a violent death or died by the hands of somebody else. But as Alison puts there, it doesn't fit for everybody because that was what a lot of us were thinking. Um, and then there's a little note saying maybe it's something to do with going too soon, which I think that's probably the strongest theory, like they've died before their time so they get this extra little chance to live, um, a little, like not live, but they get an extra chance to experience the world, um, like even though if it is limited. There's lots of little things, that, like little reveals that we get about the characters. For example, there is a House of Commons, uh, like meeting notes, um, asking Julian why he built a community pool in his garden and it's like obviously he's just using funds to uh get a private pool but he's it's the kind of a lot of the ways where we see him shift things and lie and try and win and i think it's just again shows his character and what he was like when he was alive and what he's like as a ghost there's also little things with like mary teaching alison how to milk a cow or how to build a basket um and things from fanny where it's her le le articles where she's talking about etiquette so how to like have a conversation and like meal like etiquette and stuff like that and just showing how her strictness has just been something that's been a part of her life forever is very reminiscent of the society being a proper lady and having a proper etiquette i love that there's little um newspaper clippings mainly from pat but also some from uh julian as well every ghost has their own little section so it's a picture of the ghost along with a with a quote from the series and then Alison asking them a bunch of questions and writing it down for them. Um, as she said, it's a sort of getting to know you exercise. And this is where like, there's some spoilers, um, not major spoilers, but in Kitty's extract, there are things about um, the pineapple and when you're handling a pineapple, wear gloves, stuff like that, like clues as to how she died, which if you're not fussed about spoilers, then that's fine. But for me, I really like the surprise um, that, of, of how Kitty died and I like that plot reveal. But yeah, there is so, so many fun things in here. One of my favorite things is these portraits that we have of Humphrey and every single one of them is missing. So we've got a statue that's missing a head, a portrait was missing a head. There was one with an, like a knife gone through the throat. So it's all these little things about Humphrey being uh, decapitated, which I think is quite clever. There's also little jokes about Alison taking pictures of the ghosts doing things. So you've got just a picture of a room, but then it's just Julian and, and uh, Robin playing chess. And it's obviously to her, she sees the ghosts, but to us, we just see the pictures of the room, but it's nice to see the little clips of the room. One quite sad thing that we get is a extract from a book about Mary's death. And obviously we know that she went through the witch trials and was eventually burnt at the stake. But this I think really, really highlights just how much suffering she went through. So there's like a picture of her being burnt at the stake, but there's loads of other references to little there's other references to things that she also went through, like the trials and all the things that they're accusing her of, suspicious things that she may think, that made them think that she was a witch. Um, and there's also a portrait of her being essentially drowned in the river. Obviously there's that thing as you put a witch in, the, in water and if she sinks, then she's not a witch, but she's dead. And if she floats, then she is a witch and they kill her. So yeah, Mary was found guilty of murdering by sorcery, her husband, one for conspiring with the devil to curse the crops and for conspiring with other witches in a puddle in the forms of toads. So that's all the things she was accused of and then she was all, like drowned essentially and then burned to a state, which she does not deserve that. And you, we always knew Mary's death would be horrible, but I think just seeing it kind of written down just shows like, oh wow, she really did suffer. And I'm glad they didn't show it like I know it they, it wouldn't have been graphic or anything but I think it's nice that we just kind of had Mary you know we didn't kind of hear her say it like I think this would have been too sad 
there's another little funny uh, interview here with Pat and it's him essentially let, helping somebody get away with murder <laughs> with just being too trusting and too nice and helpful, which I think is absolutely hilarious. I strongly recommend reading that one. That really made me laugh. There's also a running joke with Thomas throughout where he is uh, talking, writing letters to a lady that he met at a party and confessing his love to her and her just having no clue who he is at all, which I think is so Thomas. Um, there's so many like fun references, maybe all these little ideas that they had in the show that they couldn't fit in the show and they've put it in these, these book. Um, yeah, it's just so wonderful. Even just little things like they've got a um, clipping from like a TV guide and they've circled, Alison circled all the things that they want to watch. So obviously you've got Captain watching all of his war shows, Julian wa watching an erotic thriller, Thomas watching Friends and Kitty watching Wandry Hill, which is, I think, a really Kitty thing to watch. Then you've got Robin uh, watching Wonders of the Universe, University Challenge and Only Connect. And I think it's it's so interesting. I really love all of this. And you've also got, I know some people pointed it out, it's Taskmaster exists in the Ghosts universe because it is listed on the thing. And obviously four people who, well, five people, Six people, if you count Jess and um, Bridget, from the show have been in, in Taskmaster. There is um, some really sweet letters from the captain. You've got kind of funny letters from the captain where he's demanding arms from the uh, government because he thinks they're going to be invaded um, and them denying him and him thinking that some uh, Germans were invading when it was actually just animals. Um, but there is a really, really sad note that's all crumpled up. So he's obviously written it, ripped it out and thrown it away. From 1940, Havers left yesterday for Africa. Nothing I could do to dissuade him. It will all be over by Christmas. I'm sure of it. Which is really sad. Um, knowing he went like five years through that, like thinking Havers could be, you know, getting killed. And there is also a picture of Havers that was found in his belongings when Button House was decommissioned, which is really sweet. And again, again, just kind of shows that it it wasn't really like a one-sided thing because from, from the first time that we saw Havers, it was not implied, but it was unsure as to whether the feelings were reciprocated or if they actually had a closer relationship than just like colleagues. But I think this book and the Captain's episode that we had in series five really do show that they had, had a much closer relationship. There's also a bit where he says that he, one of his fondest memories of Button House when he was alive was going for a walk with, he doesn't say it, but we all know it's Havers. Um, and I think again, just really, really highlights that they did have a close relationship and yeah, and it's really sweet. With the release of this book, there is also a audio book, which is narrated by the cast, the main six. And I think that's a really fun addition um, to have it narrated. And I would say if you have trouble reading calligraphy, slightly messy handwriting, then perhaps listen to the audio book while you're reading, because there were even, I'm all right at reading calligraphy and stuff like that but there were a couple of words where I really did ha like I wasn't quite sure um so I reckon that would help quite a lot and there is also it's just really fun to hear them talk about in that in their own voices in the ghost voices and yeah it's just wonderful I think it's a really fun book when it was like the cover was released that people were saying it didn't quite fit what they're expecting and I do agree with that because when it was announced there was this archive book that was supposed to be Alison writing down all these things about ghosts like basically an extension of Mike's ghost board people like it didn't it didn't really fit what I was expecting first but I actually really like the cover now now that I've seen it in person it's very clear that it's a companion to a tv show but it's it's just really nice there's a lot like you've got the house you've got all the funny things in the ghost I think it really does fit and like people wouldn't pick it up expecting it to be something different as well which is probably the main reason why it's like this but yeah I think it's such a clever idea and it's nice to have like a piece of like official ghost merch because they haven't done anything um so I think this is a really good idea they do need to release more like official merch there's so many cool things that I would like um, but this is wonderful. I would highly recommend buying it if you haven't or asking for it for Christmas or something like that. There, oh, one thing I didn't say is that there are some like behind the scenes set photos in here as well, which is really nice. I love seeing like the magic that goes on behind set, like behind the screen. Um, 
I know the director always shares little things um, on Twitter. So it's, I, I really enjoy seeing all of that. And I think it just adds to the magic, in my opinion. But yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I, I don't want to spoil it. I want people to read it for themselves. But yeah, it is really, really good. It's worth the money. And yeah, you could probably read it like 10 different times and like realize another piece of information each single time you you read it. Because there are some references, like some jokes, some innuendos that I didn't quite get the first time. Um, so yeah, it's really fun to read it and listen to the audiobook. Listening to it in their own voices is just even better. But I would say, I mean, it's your, if you don't like like visual copy but I think it's really nice having the copy here because there's so many visual things in here like lots of photos and stuff like that um so if if you're wanting to see that then I would definitely rec recommend getting the book and not just the audiobook but I'm sure you'll have a good time with the audiobook if you just get that anyway because I'm not sure if it's being sold anywhere else um as a book but I imagine the audiobook would be easier to get if you haven't got access to the book yet I hope you get it soon because it is really good and also I've got a very appropriate bookmark for that, which is really fun. I know you guys would appreciate that. Um, so yeah, that is all I'm gonna say now. I could talk about this book for hours. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like, it really helps the channel and comment down below your favorite part of the ghosts book. Um, and yeah, what you think about it. I think it's really, really good. Um, and subscribe if you wanna see more videos to do with ghosts and TV in general. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.